Hello friends, this is Seher from Easy Peasy and the topic that we are going to discuss today is called as faith of pyruvate in humans under anaerobic conditions. In our normal daily routine life, the amount of energy that is required by our body is low. So at that times our lungs can happily take enough oxygen to provide energy. And this type of respiration is called as aerobic respiration. But the times when we are exerting ourselves, like running in a race, boxing, or doing exercise, in all those cases, our body needs more energy than normal. So at that times, our lungs cannot take enough oxygen to provide energy to perform that type of function. So in those cases, we need plan B. And that means that ATP will be generated without the help of oxygen. And that type of respiration is called as anaerobic respiration. Even inside our body, there are some organelles that always perform anaerobic respiration. For example, the lens and cornea of the eye, the testis present in male organisms, red blood cells and white blood cells, as they don't even have mitochondria in their cell. So all these organelles perform anaerobic respiration even if the oxygen is available. Now let's see what is happening inside a cell. So this is a normal cell and in a normal condition, the glucose that is a six carbon compound will convert itself into a three carbon compound called as pyruvate. Now pyruvate will enter inside the mitochondria if the oxygen is available and will convert itself into acetyl-CoA with the help of an enzyme called as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Now, this acetyl-CoA will enter the TCA cycle. The other name of TCA cycle is Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, through which it will enter the oxidative phosphorylation stage and will ultimately generate ADP. Now this pyruvate under anaerobic condition where oxygen is not present with the help of lactate dehydrogenase will convert itself into lactate. And this type of process does not require the electron transport chain. So the anaerobic conditions in which electron transport chain is not involved is called as fermentation. So conversion of pyruvate to lactate is called as lactic acid fermentation. Now the question is why there is a need for the conversion of pyruvate into lactate. As you can see, conversion of pyruvate into lactate does not produce any kind of energy here. Now let's see this process in more detail to find out the answer of this question. So conversion of pyruvate to lactate is called as lactic acid fermentation. Now conversion of glucose into two molecules of pyruvate is called as glycolysis. During this process, it is going to generate a 2 ATP molecule. Now this process of glycolysis is an oxidative process because in this process it is going to release electrons and hydrogen, which is going to get gained by NAD+, converting itself into NADH. So this process of converting NAD+, into NADH is a reduction process. Now, in order to perform glycolysis again, we need this NAD+, and it will be generated again when pyruvate with the help of an enzyme called as lactate dehydrogenase will convert itself into two lactate molecule. Now, this process of converting pyruvate into lactate is a reduction process because it will gain two hydrogen atoms from NADH, converting itself back into NAD+. So this process of converting NADH to NAD plus is an oxidative process. Now this NAD plus is available for glucose to perform glycolysis again. So in order to produce these two ATP molecules again and again by the process of glycolysis, the conversion of pyruvate into lactate is necessary. Make sense? Okay. Now when we are constantly exerting ourselves, then this lactate will start depositing in our muscles and after some time we will feel the soreness and tiredness in that muscle. So that's why when we are done with our exercise, we are sweating and breathing heavily. 
So this breathing heavily is the result of the oxygen depth that was taken to form lactate. Now the lactate from the muscle cell goes into the blood. And from the blood it will have few different type of weights. The first type of faith is that this lactate can enter the other type of cells which are more oxidative and then it will convert back into pyruvate which will lead to the aerobic respiration. Around 2% of lactate will be excreted from kidneys in the form of urine and most of the lactate goes back to the liver where it will convert itself back into glucose by the process called as gluconeogenesis. The cycle of converting this glucose into lactate and lactate back to glucose is called as Cori cycle. Now we will discuss the process of Cori cycle in a separate video, but the process of lactate going back into aerobic respiration will be discussed now. So this is a normal cell. As you can see, this is the cell membrane, this is the cytoplasm, and this is the mitochondria. So what happened here is that inside the cytosol, glycolysis occur, and then with the help of lactate dehydrogenase, it will convert itself into lactate. Now this lactate will enter from the pouring of outer mitochondrial membrane inside the intermembrane space. Over here, with the help of an enzyme called as mitochondrial lactate dehydrogenase, which was attached to two integral proteins called as mitochondrial pyruvate carrier and cytochrome C oxidase, which was present on the inner mitochondrial membrane. With the help of this enzyme, that is the lactate dehydrogenase, lactate converted itself back into pyruvate. And with the help of this integral protein, pyruvate enter itself in the matrix of mitochondria. Inside the matrix, it will take help from an enzyme called as pyruvate dehydrogenase and convert itself into acetyl-CoA, which then enters the TCA cycle and release energy by aerobic respiration. So, in the resting stage, the level of lactate is less than 1 millimole per liter. But in swear exercise state, the blood lactate level can rise up to 20 millimole per liter within a few seconds. But in the resting stage, if the blood lactate concentration is above 1.5 millimole, then the person is suffering from lactic acid acidosis. And the symptoms are weak muscle, rapid breathing and heart rate, and fatigue. It can also cause nausea or vomiting or jaundice sometime. Lactic acid acidosis does not occur on its own, but rather it has an underlying cause such as drugs, alcohol, or infection, diabetes, or any other kind of malignancy. If any one of you have all those symptoms of lactic acid acidosis, then you should call 911 for emergency. They will take your blood and see the concentration of lactate in that blood. And if you have the concentration of lactate more than the normal, then they might give you oxygen externally. Or might give you the IV drip to flush out the excess lactate from your blood. Now, depending on the cause of this lactic acid acidosis, your doctor might recommend you to stop taking those medication that might increase the lactate in your blood or they will give you antibiotics if the underlying cause is any kind of infection. If the underlying cause is due to some kind of kidney problem, they might give you the renal replacement therapy. And if the underlying cause is the excessive use of drugs and alcohol, then try not to take them if you are suffering from lactic acid acidosis. Stay healthy as we are the best creation of our God. You guys are awesome. Take very good care of you. Till then, bye for now.